I know for a fact that Senator McConnell and the leadership on our side hoped and believed it was possible to have uh, an opera to, to uh, take advantage of the opportunity of the discussion over raising the debt limit to create a major alteration in our plan of spending in this country and it's been disappointing uh, to not have been met halfway in that regard and knowing the numbers as I do as ranking member of the budget committee when Senator McConnell was told that the plan proposed by the White House included only a two billion dollar cut next year in spending it's just a stunning thing since our debt this year when we end the fiscal year, September 30th, uh, we'll have added $1,500 billion to our debt in one year. So we're going to save two next year. Uh, this is not acceptable. We shouldn't move forward with spending bills until we've established a budget. How simple is that? That's why we're supposed to have done it by April 15th, because the appropriations bills come along afterwards. This is the essence of good government. You should not spend taxpayers' dollars without a plan for how to efficiently allocate the do uh, dollars and in a way that maximizes the effectiveness of our spending and minimizes waste and abuse and fraud. We have too much of that in our government. This point of order, and there is a point of order in the code, uh, contained in section 303 uh, paren C of the Congressional Budget Act. Now, once that point of order is raised, the legislation in question cannot move forward unless a majority of the senators, senators vote to waive the budget requirement. The tax money, payer money should not be appropriated without a budget, without a plan. And this is what the law dictates. This is our responsibility, I believe, as legislators and as senators. This is what our, the, the organizational structure of this very Senate requires. And this is the duty that the Democrat-led Senate has refused to fulfill for 805 days. Senate Democrats have failed to adopt a budget in more than two years, and this year have refused to even produce a budget for public review. They claim they have one. They claim uh, uh, that uh, it does some good things, and they leak proportions of it to the public and spin it as being a positive document. But when asked to produce it, they don't do so. When asked to have hearings on it, they don't do so. If they're proud of it, if it'll sustain public scrutiny, why don't they bring it forward? So as soon as today, we're scheduled now to vote on a motion to proceed to the Military Construction Appropriations Bill for fiscal year 2012, beginning October 1st of this year. Regardless of my feelings about the legislation or my high admiration for those who've worked on it, I think I have a responsibility, a duty, as ranking member of the Budget Committee during this time of extreme fiscal danger the greatest debt we've ever seen to oppose cloture on this measure and to raise the 303C point of order should cloture be invoked. My objection does not mean I don't support the bill, and to any who would suggest otherwise, let me state that this action is at its core a defense of our uh, uh, men and women in uniform. No one understands duty better than those who wear the uniform, and it is our duty to write a budget that sets priorities and ensures the needs of our troops are met. The authors of the Congressional Budget Act likely did not contemplate a future in which the governing party believes budgets are no longer necessary, as seems to be the case today. That's why I'm also bringing forward legislation that will raise the 303 C point of order threshold to 60 votes. No appropriations without a budget unless 60 senators choose to waive that requirement that's in law. 
We spin and borrow it all we can. That's the fact. There's only one sound answer. Control spending and grow the economy, not tax it into submission. For Americans to regain pro uh, prosperity, Washington must regain discipline. Hiking taxes to bail out the Washington spenders who have put us in debt by increasing domestic non-defense to spending in the last two years, not war, not Social Security, I'm talking about general expenditures of our government have gone up 24% in the last two years. Numbers don't lie. Their rhetoric creates the appearance of savings, but those savings really don't exist when you look at the numbers carefully. But while the White House and Senate Democrats may think their strategy is clever, I don't think the American people should be amused. I don't think the American people are amused. We were not elected to preside over the financial decline of this country. We were not elected to shut down the committees, deny them the right to the, uh, function, to shut down debate, or cede our constitutional responsibility to secret meetings and closed-door proceedings.